Hello guys and welcome to a new video as well as a new project. So yeah, this project should be very exciting because the idea is pretty cool. So as always, I will try to cut straight to the, the little demonstration and later on we can get uh, with more in-depth details on uh, what this thing is all about. So let's run the actual project here and as you can see we have this beautiful blank screen here and uh, the project is called Game Classics for now and uh, well the idea is to get together a bunch of classic games. It's more like old and simple games but there are some games that are not so old like 2048 for example but they are simple enough they like fit in the category in my opinion so yeah uh, those are some of the titles that I intend to implement in the future so uh, Breakout, Tetris of course this is the classic of the classics uh, Tic-Tac-Toe already implemented, uh, not fully implemented, but functional, and Space Invaders, uh, Pac-Man, Connect 4, and I'm not sure even if I can implement all of those. Uh, there might be copyright issues, so I have to research all of that, and those are uh, in the details section, maybe. So for now, maybe let's try some of the games. So now I have implemented uh, Tic-Tac-Toe. So this is it for now. I haven't added any textures to the game, but I will. For now it's just things that I draw with uh, equations, I try to do it very efficiently, just one time and things like that, uh, but for now no textures, just me drawing on the screen. So yeah, the player always starts, the game always tries to beat you, so yeah, it says that you lose, it has uh, win detection, if you can, you can press <laughs> enter to start again, and the game will always try to beat you, so yeah, you have to block it, and as you can see, every time uh, you try a move, the game has something to say. I added those status messages, so every time uh, it, it's saying something to you, because, I don't know, I will try to implement the classic games, but in a fun way, something something will be added uh, to the game that tries to, to make it even more fun than it uh, originally is. So, yeah, not so fast and things like that. It will say, it will do the trash talking to you all the time. So this is the tic-tac-toe version of the game. Um, yeah, it's not fully implemented. I'm not sure if the AI I created uh, can beat you 100% of the time, uh, which is what it's supposed to do. Because tic-tac-toe is a game that is impossible to win uh, if you play, if both players play it correctly. So yeah i'm not sure if my ai accomplishes that but i think it works 100 percent so it's that phase for now okay uh well you can switch games uh anytime by going to the main menu for now and now let's try the snake application so yeah it's controlled by the keyboard and i also intend to implement uh, some cool things uh, here in the future uh like different kinds of food that the snake can eat and those of course will have different effects uh, in the game. You can see that the game doesn't have uh, the score showing uh, for now. I'm not even sure if this is necessary for the traditional snake because all you care about is the size of the snake. Um, but for this game it's probably important and also uh, the game can pause. All of the games can pause because this is, I created a general framework uh, this, and this framework provides a bunch of things for you. By the way, the collision is okay, like I can collide with myself, let me demonstrate, by, by dying now. Oop. Okay, I can collide with myself, but I'm not che checking uh, the collision uh, with the, the walls of the game, because I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, the, the framework already provides a very simple way. Uh, of doing that, but maybe I want to do things like some special kinds of food will create walls in the scenario, which is something a little bit complicated because the snake can be really everywhere, so I'm not sure how I'm supposed to do that, but I want to try this, I want to try, and things should be pretty cool, like food that uh, maybe makes the, the snake shrink, or that makes it uh, Visible for a short period of time, so this should make the game very much challenging and a lot of fun <laughs> to play. So yeah, this is the snake game. I can start another one, and also I created this game, which is which is not really supposed to be a game. I'm just calling it um, the test framework here, where I am well testing this framework. So here is. Uh, 
where I first tried rendering the images, um, the mouse interaction, so I can pick the bubbles if I want. Uh, there is some AI here, this guy uh, is trying to pop the bubbles and if I let it, it will reduce my score. So you can see here that I have 100 points, now I have only 90. And um, bubbles, I can collect up to 20 bubbles here and I can release those bubbles, uh, whatever I want almost whatever <laughs> you can't you can't like click here for example I'm clicking and it doesn't do anything so yeah the idea is to try to escape from the bubble popper or bubble catcher and uh, don't let it pick the bubbles because if 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 the if it catches the bubbles then then you're in trouble you get minus 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 10 points and if you can, uh, I'm trying to play and explain at the same time, I shouldn't be doing this, but just to demonstrate what this can do, you can see that every time it's it hits the bubble, it shows that you, you lose or earn 10 points. You can see that it handles transparency and animations uh, roughly. <laughs> uh, it's just the start of the project for now, but this is the, the framework we have for now, so it can, it can handle a bunch of nice things and much more is to come in the future. So, yeah, this is the idea, having a bunch of games in a single place. Uh, um, I really want you to work on the network thing here, so basically you will be able to play tic-tac-toe with your friends using the network uh, options here. Uh, some games, of course, or maybe not so, of course, maybe not so obvious, but I don't know if we can have n uh, uh, multiplayer snake, for example. Maybe people can watch you play, but not play with you. So I should be able to implement all of those features. Uh, also, of course, I'm, I am aware that other f game frameworks are available with all the options very much optimized with sound support, uh, lots of rendering support, network support, but I'm just having fun and learning from this project. So one of the ideas is not, it's not just to, to have the games, you know, but to learn from those things because uh, some of those things with uh, computer graphics and stuff are things that I learned a long time ago and I need to update my knowledge so I have been spending a lot of time studying and researching things so I can implement uh, everything here like the, the collision detection to do it efficiently uh, and other things like that you know everything related to to the game okay so uh, as well this project uh, I plan on making it fully open source and this is going to be available on some platform probably on github so you guys can check out the code so this should be in theory useful for anyone uh, wanting to learn how uh, those simple games are designed uh, so they know how to if, if they want to explore if they want to learn there are ways so i have an example here the code for snake i'm trying to make the code very much uh, readable so for example here if you read the code you can see that if the head collides with candy i'm i'm calling the the little balls uh, candies then eat and spawn another candy so yeah code should be very much readable there are some tricks here for example, with uh, the movement of the snake, uh, you of course have to check which key is being pressed. But if you're going in a certain direction, the snake can never go in the opposite direction because it will crash on uh, inside itself. So you have to check for that and not never, never allow that to happen. So instead of checking in every direction, I just do, do some, some simple math here and I can check for for this in every direction without studying it case by case. So all of those little tricks you will be able to find in the source code here. And hopefully you'll be able to do uh, pull uh, requests and of course improve the code if you, keep, if you keep it consistent and clear and well documented. By the way, I still have to work on that. I have comments everywhere, but I have to build some more uh, explanatory comments maybe. Uh, and then add a proper license for the code, then I will be able to release it on GitHub, but when I do so, and it will be pretty soon, I assure you guys, I will let you guys know. Um, okay, so here we have the code for the, the three games that we have now, plus the, the game manager, and we have another package here where we have everything related to the to the game engine or the game framework that I'm working on. So all the classes do a lot of stuff for now. Let's start maybe with this one. I will not show 
uh, all of them because it's not necessary for this video. Uh, so basically we have a enum here and it adds a name for the game and it also adds a object, a instance of the objects in it as well as a name so that when I load the game it knows which games are supposed to be enabled because they have an actual instance and which ones uh, will be here but are not here yet because they are null just here so I created this in them and every time I, I add a new game I just have to add edit or change the enum and it will automatically update the menu and the menu will also be functional if the, the user clicks on it it will start properly because it has a the proper api it always it always knows how to run stop pause things uh, it inherits every behavior from the game classic uh, abstract class and the, the abstract this abstract class will force you to implement the, the pause uh, no, not the pause, but the start, update, and stop. So every game has those three calls that you have to take care of, and then you can uh, basically extend this class and do whatever you want. And the main, the game manager will deal with the other things here. Uh, this class here will, I, I don't know, uh, the, the classes do so, many, so much stuff, like scene objects will handle the images, uh, it will handle, uh, handle um, collision with other objects it will take into account the transparency so yeah and it's I recently did a lot of improvements here so it's way more efficient in the tech and collision detection for now this class texture packs not being used but it's probably the next class I'm going to work on because I, I don't want to do equations for <laughs> for everything that I print on screen I just want to uh, to have textures during the, the work it's going to look a lot better uh, also game classic handles it, each object is being updated so it assembles a image and sends it to the game IO device which is providing uh, which has the screen where we draw things and it also reads the keyboard and mouse and provides uh, this information in a very simple way that your game can use later so yeah I, I don't want to get into too much details here it's it was a lot of work like two weeks of not only uh, programming but researching so hours and hours and hours and uh, honestly I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> with this project and uh, hopefully uh, you guys will too so yeah I will give you guys updates frequently as frequently as I can honestly uh, I will I will be working on this every week even if I don't publish any videos and uh, uh, let me just show you again the list of games that I intend to implement so that you can pause the video and see for yourself. And if you have any suggestions on what game we should implement next, just let me know in the comments. Uh, of course, I still have to finish all those games here. And uh, yeah, but you know, I, I believe that all of those games will be uh, beta for a long time. Like even if, even if I deliver what I believe to be the final release, those are all going to need some updates forever I don't know <laughs> this is a long-term project but uh, this is a good parallel project because my main project with six worlds is obviously going to take a long time I'm not even sure if I'm going to code that thing in Java uh, I, I will use OpenGL on that but I'm not using anything here any framework or even OpenGL because I also want this to be uh, for students so you can see how everything is done here no no layers are being used here but for my main game of course I can't have the luxury of implementing implementing everything from scratch I believe so yeah I will be still working on my main project but this is going to be a, a really nice parallel project that I can use for research and learning and updating my knowledge on everything so Finally, I just hope you guys enjoyed this little video, so thank you very much for watching and see you next time, bye!